Okay, so welcome back to uh, the login and register tutorial. In this part, we're going to be uh, giving ourselves the ability to gather the currently logged in users' data. And we're going to do this really efficiently. So if we ever add any more fields to our database, for example, a gender or, or any other information, um, then uh, it's going to make it extremely easy to just go ahead and output any data we want. So um, you'll see at the moment I'm logged in. Um, I have just a, a, literally a message here saying logged in and nothing else. I don't even have a link to the logout, uh, the logout file that we created earlier. So what I want to do is I want to start building up this side panel that's going to greet me and it's going to give me a list of links, for example, change my password, log out, things like that. So um, we are going to be dealing in this tutorial with the users.php function file. And we're going to be adding a function to here that lets us pass in any number of fields and, and return that in an array. And then we can just use this anywhere on the site at any point uh, and just really, really easily you know, type in what field we want to grab and it will grab it for us. Um, aside at the moment, you this is the, this is the message that you can see. Uh, remember we created this at the aside, which is here. Um, so if the user is logged in, echo logged in, else include the login form. So this time what I want to do is instead, uh, I don't want to echo anything out, I want to include another file and I'm going to include loggedin.php. Now we haven't created this yet so don't worry, we're going to go ahead and just do that now. So I'm going to load up a new file and save this in widgets and I'm going to save this as loggedin.php. So logged in is going to house the hello Alex or hello Billy or whatever users currently logged in. Um, and that's going to be here. So when I refresh now, you see that, you know, it's gone. There's nothing there. That's simply because we don't have any data in here. So if I just type something in there, you'll see that that's now been included at the side. So what we want to do is we want it to look something like this. Hello and then Alex. So this, this is going to be the username here. So we want to replace this value eventually. Um, and we don't need to worry about any any checks, so if logged in, um, just simply for the fact that we're including this if the user is logged in. So we can go ahead and get rid of this aside.php file now, and we're going to focus on creating this function and outputting it in this file. Now we're also going to need to open up our init file, because down here, or up here rather, we're going to include a, a file uh, sorry, a variable that's going to hold all of this data and we can use that anywhere because remember init.php we're going to include uh, in any files that we're using. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump and take a look at our database. So we have all of these fields. The ones that we're interested in pulling in for runtime are things like the username, the first name, last name, email, and uh, active we can use. Uh, we can do a clever little trick with that um, to see you know, if the user is currently logged in, we might want to delete this or change this value. The user will then be automatically logged out. So we'll look at that trick a bit later in the next part. Okay, so um, yeah, so we want the username, first name, last name, the email address. We're actually going to pull in password as well. And you might be thinking, oh, hold on a minute, that's really insecure, isn't it? Well, no, it's not because we're going to be running this, obviously, compiling uh, server side. No one's going to have access to this. So we can pull in password and that's going to be really, really useful uh, for the change password part of the tutorial as well. Um, so, OK, let's go ahead and start to create this function then. So uh, I'm going to scroll down to here, down to the bottom. In fact, we'll start it at the top. It's just going to make a lot more sense. So I'm going to call this function user underscore data. And this function is going to take an unlimited amount of parameters. The first one being the user ID. So I'm only going to define the user ID parameter within the function. Uh, and the reason being is that we can actually access parameters that are passed beyond those that we've defined. So for example, if I was to go into init.php uh, and I was to create a, um, a, a user data variable here and say that's equal to the user data function, I might pass in the session ID like that. And then I might pass in first name, last name, email, etc. So I can pass in these different variables. And within the uh, the user data function, I now have access to anything I pass beyond this. Uh, not being 
people realize this, but we can access these variables here. And that's useful because we don't need to define what we pass through to this and what we return. So essentially user data is just going to be returning all this data from the database. So I'm going to wrap this around a conditional statement. And this is basically going to be if the user is logged in. So if logged in, uh, sorry, that's a function, is equal to true. Then we now want to grab this data. We don't want to do it for the users logged out because that, you know, it doesn't make sense. We also need to define the session, uh, the user ID session. Uh, remember, we set this in login.php. Let me just go ahead and open it up here. Uh, we set this here, so we've got a session called user ID, and that's equal to the user ID that the user is currently logged in. In my case, that would be uh, one. Okay, so um, we're going to say uh, session user ID is equal to dollar underscore session user ID. So we're now grabbing that uh, value. I'm going to go ahead and just replace this now with session user ID. So again, I'm, I'm putting this within the logged in function uh, check because we don't need to set a session user ID uh, and hold this in a session user ID variable, um, you know, if, if the user is not logged in. Okay, so um, uh, let's go ahead and pass in all the values that we actually want to retrieve from this. So um, I actually want the user ID as well. That might be useful at some point. Um, I want the username. I also want the password. So I'm grabbing all this data that I can use anywhere on the site at any point. So the first name, last name, and email address, and that's about it. We'll, down here, uh, a bit later on, we'll create the function to log the user out if they don't exist. We won't pull it through here um, instead. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and test outputting this, these values. Let's just go ahead and refresh our page to make sure nothing's gone wrong. No, that's fine. We're logged in at the moment. We've got this hello Alex, but we're obviously looking to replace that. So the function user data, well, what it's, what's it going to do? Well, the first thing we want to do is define that define a variable with a with a, an array, an empty array, and that's the data that we're going to return. So data equals array. That's all we need to do. Now we need to grab the user ID from here, but we need to sanitize it. So I'm going to uh, cast it to an integer, and essentially this is just going to mean that we can't uh, we, we 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 cast this value to an integer, meaning we remove any characters or, or anything like that, and we we create an integer from that uh, that input. Um, that just means that we can't, you know, go ahead and uh, and pass any SQL injection, uh, you know, strings into our into our uh, function or our query later. Sorry. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, define two variables that are going to get the arguments from the function. Uh, the first one's going to count the number of arguments. The second one's going to actually get the arguments. So I'm going to create a variable called func get, uh, or no, we'll say func num args first. And this is equal to the func num args function. And what this is going to do, I'll just echo func num args. Uh, when I go ahead and refresh, we've got seven. Now we've got this number up here because we've done it in init.php. Uh, that's not important. The fact that we have passed through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parameters, we now know how many parameters we've passed through to this function. So that's really useful because then we can loop through and grab each one. Okay, so now um, I want to actually define func get args, and this is going to be func get args. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print r func get args. Now func get args function returns an array of the arguments passed through to the function. So in this case we're just going to get a visual representation of this data. Um, and you'll see here we've got um, uh, first uh, element is one because that's the session ID, remember my uh, my user ID. Uh, the second is, well from this one all the way over to here are, are basically what we've passed through. Uh, that basically is that onwards. Okay, so very clever. We're now uh, checking uh, all of these values or, or retrieving all of these values. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to do a quick conditional statement to say if func num args is greater than uh, zero, so i.e., has it got one or more arguments, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unset, in fact, it should be more than one because we need the user ID and then another field to grab. Um, I'm going to go and unset the first um, 
the first uh what's it called uh, art, uh element of the array um so i'm going to go ahead and unset funk get args zero so now when i go ahead and print r on that funk get args uh, we have user ID username, but we don't have the initial user ID because we've stored that in a variable up here We don't need to worry about it anymore And the reason I've removed this from the array is because uh, I want to create a field set from this data and you'll see what I mean in a minute We're going to use the implode function again uh, that we used in the last part of the tutorial So I'm going to create a variable called fields and that's going to be equal to implode We're going to implode uh, with with something uh, remember, we're taking a uh, fun uh, an array and converting it to a string. So we're passing through func get args. Now, what we essentially want from this fields thing, uh, and if I go ahead and just echo fields here, you'll see that now we have all the fields that we pass through to this function in uh, a list, well, a string basically. What we want to do is we want to be clever and we want to convert this to how we would pass through it into a, a MySQL query. So uh, in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to look at actually uh, constructing or, or fiddling around with this to make it so it's the, the correct format to pass through into a query. And what we can then do is pass this string into the query and just retrieve all the fields we want. So like I said, it's a really flexible way of doing things. And then if we want to go into init.php and remove something, it just automatically updates itself because it loops through all the arguments, puts it into the query, and we're done. So that will be in the next part of this uh, this part of the tutorial.